learning how to understand the Bible. We're looking at Bible hermeneutics. This is part two of Bible hermeneutics, the establishing sound principles of biblical interpretation. How do we understand and interpret the Bible? That's what we have uh, endeavored to do uh, in this series of lessons. And uh, this lesson actually could be entitled, The Battle for the Bible. And more specifically, The Battle for the Truth of the Bible. More specifically, The Battle Involving What the Bible Really Does Mean. That's the essence. Now, when a believer, that's all of us, hopefully, when a believer stands fully clothed in the armor of God, according to Ephesians 6, when you as a soldier begin to put on the armor of God, in Ephesians chapter 6, what piece of armor do you put on first? Is it the helmet of salvation or what is it? I'm just saying what comes first in Ephesians 6. You girt. Your loins about with what? Truth. Truth. The Bible is a book of truth. It's God's truth. In contrast to all other uh, knowledge, the Bible is God knowledge. It's God breathed. It's God's revelation to his children. So we know, dear church, that as Christian soldiers, <coughs> We must be fully armed with the full armor of the gospel in order to advance the kingdom of our God into time and history. The final piece of that armor is the helmet of salvation. And the final end, it, finally he will put on the helmet of salvation and take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and so forth. So we're looking here today about the battle for truth. No soldier would dare go into battle unarmed. Those who are called and chosen to be soldiers of Christ must understand that God has given us a weapon. That weapon is the Bible. It's called the sword of the spirit. Amen. The sword of the spirit. Very important. And so, to the degree that we can use expertise in this, in the use of this weapon called the Bible, uh, we will be able to advance truth, defend truth, and advance the kingdom of God. There is, church, a life and death struggle for the spiritual, physical, moral survival of our people in the 21st century. And our God, the living God, has given us a revelation from heaven to help us win that battle if we will use the sword of truth to do it. So we dare not enter this battle without the sword of truth. Sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, which together with prayer is our great offensive weapons in the battle of the ages. When you look at the world you live in today, people, everything that you love and hold dear is at stake. We cannot, we dare not, we shall not forfeit the sacred ground of our faith, our family, our heritage, Satan and his minions who now stalk the Anglo-Saxon nations of the earth seeking whom they may devour. God has given us a word, a sword, a, a weapon. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper, say it with me, sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And of the loins, of the, of the very bones and loins of the flesh. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. As we read in Hebrews 4 and verse number 12. So God has given us what he says 
is a weapon that is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. It's called the Bible. Now, the torch of truth is now in the hands of those who are living today. Those who have preceded you in time and history have already waged a warfare for Jesus Christ, the truth in his kingdom. So now, and many of those people bled, many of them died in their struggle for the truth. It is imperative, church, that you and I receive the torch that has been passed to us. God is saying, look, I'm passing the torch to this generation. What will you do with the truth that God is passing on to this generation? It's imperative that we live with a cause that is greater and bigger than ourselves. So I could ask you, this morning, what is the greatest single cause in your life? What is the most noble purpose that you have for living life today? If you do not embrace a cause that is much larger than your little personal private world, something is really wrong. Because you need to have a cause that is greater, more important to you than anything else in this world, and it ought to be the Lord Jesus Christ and the pursuit of his kingdom, everlasting life. So as we move now into this study, I'd like to ask you this morning, do we really understand the nature of truth? I'd like for you to think about this. If you would turn in your Bible for just a moment to the Gospel of John chapter 18, I'd like for you to look at something in John's Gospel Chapter number 18, and notice what Jesus uh, is saying here uh, just on the eve of his death in John's Gospel, chapter 18. Jesus is standing before Pontius Pilate in, a, in, in one of those moments before he's going to be crucified. And in the 18th chapter of John, beginning in verse number 36, Jesus told Pilate, he said, My kingdom, say this with me now. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered unto the Jews. But now is my kingdom from hence. Now, we understand that the kingdom is literal, it's real. But God's kingdom is not made of the things of this world. His kingdom transcends all the things that we can think about in this present world. And that's why Jesus could say that my kingdom is not of this world. Now the very next verse is the one I want you to hold on to. I would like you to mark this verse in your Bible if you have not already marked it. Pilate therefore said unto Jesus, Art thou then, art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. Thou sayest that I am a king. This is what you said. Because everybody in that point in time, that is the, the indigenous Judean population, wanted Jesus to become proclaimed as a king right then. They wanted the kingdom to be immediately set up with Jesus ruling and reigning and taking over the whole Judean area, uh, driving the Romans out and setting up his kingdom right there at that moment in time. But Jesus said something very, very important. He said... Uh, in response to Pilate, he said some words that are powerful. Thou sayest to that, thou sayest that I'm a king. To this end was I born. Now, now hold on to that. To this end was I born, and I'm going to tell everyone in this building today that this is why you were born. The very next, the very next statement. This is why God gave you life. Now you can disregard what I'm telling you and you have every freedom to do that. But I, I want you to know that at the judgment seat of God, this, this next statement that Jesus makes is precisely why God gave you life. And we're, here it is. He says, To this end was I born, and for this cause came I unto the world, 
that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Now, beloved, notice Jesus didn't say everybody's going to believe him. He didn't say that at all. He said, I came to bear witness of the truth. Now, your job, your primary job in this world is to defend and bear witness to the truth. Amen. That's why you were born. And, and I'm going to tell you here this morning that that is why you need to understand and know what's between the covers of the Bible. Because the Bible embodies the truth that you were called to be born into, to stand for, to defend, and to hold faithful to the end of your days on this earth. Now, think about it this way, church. Whenever you gather people together into a congregation, I want you to think carefully now. When you gather people into a congregation, there's going to be people that you really, really like. There's going to be some people that you like a little bit. Some people will be uh, like sandpaper, and you're, you're going to try, and, and you're going to tolerate them, but you're not going to necessarily like them that well. Now, did you know that your purpose in being in this building today is not to come and measure your relationship necessarily to people? If your future is dependent upon how you view people, I got news for you. You're not going to be very strong as a Christian because you're going to get distracted. There's going to be you're going to become so involved with people and their distractions that you will lose the the, the reason you were born and the reason you're born and the reason you're here today has nothing to do with who's sitting necessarily next to you. It has everything to do with the truth and what the truth means and what the truth must uh, hold in your life and how you must hold on to that truth. So that means to me, church, that when I come here this morning, I wasn't concerned over whether I was going to be in total agreement with everyone that I was going to worship with. Or that we were going to have perfect chem a match in chemistry. The, the fact is, if they believe the truth, that's good enough for me. That's all I need to know. If they're walking with the same truth that I'm walking in, I don't, I'm not going to judge them about other things. It's not important to me. I'm only important church in the survival and the defense of truth. And I want you to think about this. Jesus said, for this cause was I born. This is why I came into the world to bear witness of the truth. That is why you need to understand what the Bible is all about. Amen. Because the Bible alone determines what truth is. Amen. See, Jesus is not walking with us today, but he's with us. Nevertheless, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Nevertheless, it is expedient for you that I go away, Jesus said. It is expedient for you that I go away. And I'm going to send a comforter that will guide you into all truth. And that truth, of course, that we're guided into by the power of the Holy Spirit is important. Remember what Jesus said in John 14, verse 6. I Say it with me. I am the way, the truth, the and the life. I am the way, the truth, truth. T-R-U-T-H. That's five letters, the number of grace. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Think about that. Man. No one comes to the Father but by me. In John 17, 17, Jesus, red-lettered words, sanctify them, my children, the elect, by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Hold on to that scripture, John 17, 17. Sanctify them by thy word. Thy word is true. Consider that. In John 8, 32, John 8, 32, Jesus said, Know the truth. Know the truth. Say one thing. And the truth, truth shall make, make you free. free. Know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Church. When you grow discouraged, nine times out of nine times 
out of 10, your discouragement is going to be connected to people. Amen? Nine times out of every 10. And those people have very little to do with why God called you. Your goal is to hold on to the truth. Your, goal, your, your, your purpose is to hang in there for the truth. And, and, and when people try to distract you with all kinds of people problems, that is a diversionary road that Satan wants you to walk down to. Who does the Bible say is the accuser of the brother? Satan. Who is the big accuser of the brother? According to the Bible. It's not anybody in here. The Bible identifies the accuser of the Bible as the head of the kingdom of Satan. His name is Satan. You can read it in Revelation chapter 12. Satan is the accuser of the brother. So church, all I'm saying here today is this. If you know the truth, love the truth, and hold on to the truth, and do not let yourself become distracted by people, by people and their talk and their problems, you are going to be a successful, victorious, overcoming soldier of Christ. That's true. Everyone you know that has been lost in the field of battle has been lost because they got distracted by something. And more often than not, it's other people. So don't you dare allow other people to distract you and take you away from truth. Amen. So important. The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 6.13 that before Pontius Pilate, Jesus made a great confession. He made a great confession, a good confession of his faith. So I could ask you today, church, God is not asking you. God is not asking you to live in this world as though your highest priority is to take some kind of a measuring stick and measure everybody that's around you, look at their lives under a microscope. That's not why God created you. God put you here to be a defender of his truth. Know the truth and the truth will make you free. 